ashes on the earth. Eh ukubusi so again ukuthi ukhone ukuthola umnotho nakho konke. It is the way of God. Indlela kaNkulunkulu. And there's the way of the devil. Beseke kuba khona ka Satan. Because because if someone pray for you ngoba uma umuntu umuntu ekukhulekela and you are, you ask a pastor for a prayer hey uh, i need work uh, i need to pass uh, i need to, i want to pass the, the diploma or uh, i want a promotion at work beseke ucela upasa uthi hey eh ngidinga umsebenzi ngidinga ukuphumelela ngifuna nje ukuthi ngikhushule emsebenzini if the pastor prays and it happens It, it is maybe certain that it is the devil that exhausts your prayer. Because when Jesus was healing or, pray, or praying for somebody, he said, your faith has saved you. Uh, I will speak about a little point uh, quickly. The, the topic of the preaching today it was the path of a child of God. Yes. And The, first, the priority of a child of God on the earth is to find the way that leads him to his father. It is his absolute priority on earth. It is not the riches of the world. It is not having a, a big house. It, it is not being rich. His priority is not even to get married or marry his children. And having a big Uh, a good job so you can take care of your family you can have a big house with a with a pool or i don't know god can read in your heart and he if you want a prayer for those kinds of needs for uh, in this spirit And uma wena ke udinga imithandazo ngokuthi udinga lezo zinto lezo then god will make sure that it is the devil that you will go to see that you will that you will see and you will ask the devil for a prayer eh uNkulunkulu uzokwenza ke ukuthi uzoqinisekisa ukuthi wena uyakusathane la uyocela khona umkhuleko so jesus said eh ujesu uthe oh where's my phone okay i will find the scripture for you Or well, maybe I can I don't need maybe all of you you know that scripture. He said seek first the kingdom of heaven and all that your heart wants then you'll have it afterwards after seeking the kingdom of heaven. O Jesus ke wathe efuna qala ombuso wezulu. So that's the konke lokho kudinga enhlizweni yakho kuzo kuzonikwa. So that's the way of God for you to be blessed on this earth and have all the riches that you want. You But if deeply in your heart you know you know your heart you know yourself. If it's the riches of the world that you are seeking first. Then the devil will give it to you. But with the devil. There's always a counterpart. There's what? A counterpart. You know? This word it exists. Yes. <laughs> okay okay you never know in english because, <laughs> did you know that so god make can make promises he make a lot of promises but, but did you know that the devil can, can promise can make promises to you too uh, we are was now oh sorry I, i i i will read this scripture because 
I have written this one. Sorry, uh, I don't have a big brain. <laughs> but I have faith, so I'm saved. <laughs> so I, I found I found the verse. It is in the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. So that you can understand, it is it is the devil is tempting Jesus. He's uh, trying to deceive Jesus. And the devil uh, leading him up into a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the habitable world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this power and all this glory for it has been given to me. It is the devil that is, who is speaking. It has been given to me, and to whomsoever I will give it. But you will, you will have to kneel before me, and so on and so on. So the devil can give you all the riches of the world. But you will, you will say. I go, I go to a church of Jesus. I don't go to a church of Satan. So if the pastor prays for me, it is Jesus that is that is blessing me. But mm -mm -mm. mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> you will say, that, this is where it becomes interesting. Uh, this is this is where you have to listen carefully. Many, many, many. I won't take time to explain this. But, but if you are searching. If you are seeking the spiritual thing, and if you are observing nature, uh, the world around you, you will understand that we are at, at the end times. And the Bible, God gave us some information of the hiding place of the devil of the devil in the end times. But unkulunkuluge usniyezile uluazi lapusa chanes fiche ko na ngenga tizotri na. So I will read in the Bible again. Gizofunda ge pa ipeli ni fuuti. Still talking about the devil. And gisa kulumango sacha. Um. Okay, this is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let nothing you do be done in secret. Chapter 2, verse 3. Let not anyone deceive you in any manner. Because it will not be unless the apostasy have first come. And the man of sin have been revealed, the son of perdition, in other words, the devil. Verse 4. Who opposes and exalts himself on high against all called God. So that he himself, the devil, sits down in the temple of God 
Showing himself that he is God. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And And the word was made flesh, it was Jesus. Jesus is the name of the Lord of Mighty. Almighty. And the Bible reveals that at the end times the devil will take the name of Jesus. The Bible also said, like I said before, this nature doesn't teach you. When you go, I, I don't know, in Pretoria or in Cosmo, how many churches of Jesus are there? How many? There are too much. Maning. And the Bible also says in Ephesians 4, verse 13, that the real church of Jesus. Ephesians 4, verse 13. chapter 4, verse 13. The real church of Jesus must have the unity of faith. And Jesus said, I will build my assembly in Matthew 16. And he never gave it a name. So when you see Catholic Church of Jesus, Protestant Church of Jesus, Zion Church, Twelve Apostle Church, all those are churches of Satan. Uh, I will start from from the beginning. There is only one God in heaven. Which is Jesus. It cannot be two truths on earth. So all those different churches. They have different truth. Different pastoral schools. <laughs> If I go to the Zion Church Pastoral School, uh, maybe they don't have it. Maybe if I have in the Catholic, uh, Protestant Church Pastoral School. I have my diploma and I can be a Protestant pastor. If I enter an Evangelical Church, I cannot be a pastor. Because the pastoral school protestant is not recognized by the evangelical church. So, like we said before, Jesus has only one church. So, if for example, I am Catholic. He is Protestant. If I know I have faith that I am in, on the right path, I must be courageous enough to say to him, the Protestant to Protestant one, that he will go to hell if he dies as a protestant because God is one his truth on earth must be one but instead of this you can see you can you call 
you, you know this word yes. Economical reunions. And they all gather together and they pray together. A Christian can even pray with a Muslim. Question. Who are they praying? Who are they praying? The Muslims, they don't even recognize the crucifixion of Jesus. So when a Christian prays with a Muslim, who are they praying? God will never allow this. They are praying the devil. Okay. So this was the first point. So, uh, I was a little bit long on this point, but just to say to you that I will pray for you. I know that the God that I pray is powerful. There has been so much miracle that I, I don't even want to start to quote them. But like I said, it is up to you, it is up to your faith. And first of all, if Jesus said your faith has saved you, you must hear me preach. And you must believe what you heard if you want your prayer to be successful. This is not even a revelation. But that's the way that the people who were asking Jesus for a prayer, that's the way that the prayer was successful. So we just read the last chapter of the prophet, living prophet of this generation. Who is my master, the prophet Kaku Philip. Like I said that the devil can make promises. God also make many promises. For example, God made a promise to Abraham one day. He said to him, your, your children will be enslaved in a foreign land. For 400 years, but I will deliver them. And how did this promise of God was fulfilled? What was the fulfillment of this promise of God? It was Moses. Moses was the fulfillment of this promise of God. God has made many, many, many promises in the Bible. But the word of God is a mystery. For example, when God spoke through the mouth of prophet Isaiah, he said that one day there will be a cry in the wilderness. And the fulfillment of this promise was John, was John the Baptist. Even made a promise to Moses in Deuteronomy 18, verse 18. That one people from the, the, the tribe of Israel will, will, it will come a savior. From, Within the tribe of Israel. And the fulfillment of this promise was Jesus himself. Manifested in the flesh. 
So the fulfillment of the promises of God. There are men like you and me. Men who are eating. Men who are going who are crying. Men who goes to the toilet. Jesus went to the toilet. He washed his behind, and after that, he come to you. He says, "Whoever sees me sees the Father." Do you understand how hard it was to recognize G this guy Jesus in his time? Do you really think that you, Utabawutuena? You are more spiritual than the Jews. The Jews, they were not led by uh, uh, presidents or ministers like, like us. But they were always led by prophets. Still they rejected Jesus the Messiah. And you, you think that you're more spiritual than them. Because you have read a book. Sitting on your couch comfortably in your, at home. A book that tells you a story so clear. So easy to understand. That Jesus is a good, a good guy who died for us. And all of a sudden you are a super spiritual human being. But if you believe if you believe that the Bible is true, then you believe that there were men and women like us who had to pass this test to recognize this guy who are crying, eating, going to the toilet as the one and only man who are, who are sent by God in this generation. Everybody is confessing Jesus today. But at the upper room, when the, uh, the day that the Holy Spirit came down from the sky, it went down on those who believed Jesus in his time. How many people was there who believed in Jesus when he was alive? One hundred and twenty. On all the face of the earth. One hundred and twenty people received the Holy Spirit because they believed in Jesus. Salvation is always a hard test. And God wouldn't be just. God wouldn't be just. If he had made past this test to the past generation, for example, a generation had to follow Moses in the desert for 40 years. Will you be able to, to survive in the desert for 40 years? Salvation is hard. It is a test. And all of a sudden, in this generation, you just have to open a book, you read it, and you are saved. Let me tell you, if you believe this, you will go straight to hell. Quickly.
Do you know why? Because if you believe this, that you can be saved by the scriptures of the past prophets. Then you are behaving like the enemies of God in all the generations. In the time of Jesus, there were religious people that were claiming to be uh, disciples of Moses. They knew the scriptures of Moses so well. They were the boss in Israel. They were like the, the chiefs in Israel. But Jesus said to them, You read the scriptures because you think that there is eternal life in it. But you have to believe in me. <laughs> and they couldn't humble themselves to accept that salvation is following this guy. Because they were so full of themselves of for all the knowledge that they had. In in the book of Ecclesiastes, it is said that what has been is what that shall be. History is repeating itself over and over. And the trial that humanity has to pass in each generation is to, is to recognize the man that God has sent you. Sent you. you know, we just heard so the last chapter of Prophet Kakufli. Yes. And there is a great lesson that I learned from it. Because in this chapter, there are some elements, some teachings that are even disturbing the believers of the message of Prophet Kakufli. And so the great lesson that I learned from this is that no human being can ever claim that he can get used to God. It is the worst error that you can do on earth. There are some teachings in, in this chapter. Uh, for example, it is it is it can be troublesome for, for some of us. This chapter reveals that a man called William Seymour was the prophet that God sent to all mankind for his generation. And this prophet agrees with the woman ministry. A woman being a pastor. And from the very beginning of the revelation of Prophet Kakufilip, he was condemning the ministry of the women. For many, many reasons. For example, uh, God put a sign on the women. What they have every month. It is the sign 
to prove that a woman has a moment in the month that where he, she is impure. And if a woman prays, prays and, and put her hands on you while she's praying, and she has it, then you are cursed. Then all of a sudden, Kaku Philip says that this guy, William Seymour, who is agreeing with the ministry of women, is a true prophet. What do I get? William Seymour. So all of those that thought that the word of God belongs to them This message, the word of God, the revelation of God, it is mine I master it Then you are on the wrong path this is you must you can never get used to God. And by the time that you have recognized the, the real prophet of your generation, when he speaks, you say amen. Even Jesus, not Jesus, many people were following him. But at a certain moment of his ministry, he was saying such harsh things. He was saying things that were hard to hear. Hard to hear. Things like, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. That day, many of the, the ones who were following Jesus, they left him. They said, hey. They said, hey, this guy is crazy. But there were a few people that... that that was still with Jesus, that was still following Jesus. Not because of the miracles, but Peter said, To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The most important thing for it to, to identify a real man of God is the word, is his word. Listen, who can talk like this? It, I think, I don't know this, the, the, the verse exactly. Um, but in the chapter, Prophet Kaku Philip says that if your main goal in on earth is to build riches to build your house, because you used what God gave you, just to accomplish that, then it is a curse for you. Because the, the, the main reason why, why we are on earth is salvation. If you are in good health today, it is for you to seek God. If you are if you have money today, it is for you to, to be able to seek God better. But if you use all that God gave you for the earthly thing, then you are cursed. Okay, so I will continue with my topic, the path of a child of God. In the path of God, you can you can see 
that your life and the life of a child of God must be faithful to the scriptures. And in the very beginning of the Bible, God said that man shall have the domination over the demons. You must dominate over evil spirits. So there are many, many ways for you to see that if your life is faithful to the scriptures or not. If you if you live a hard life, you feel like your life is blocked. It can be a demon that is doing this. When, when, so you are oppressed in the day. And you're even oppressed at night. If when you go to sleep. You're having sex dreams. It is one of the proof that you are not on the right path. It is the result of a sex sin. If you have ever slept with somebody who is not your husband or not your wife, then the demons will have a legitimate right over your life. And you will end up having sex dreams every, maybe every night. Some people call this, uh, how do you call it? Spiritual. Uh, the merry husband of nice husband. Spiritual husband. Spiritual husband. <laughs> they, are, they are not spiritual husbands. They are demons. demons. Do you really think that the apostle of Jesus, when they were walking with him, they had sex dreams during the night and they, they were waking up in the morning, oh, I have to clean my, my watches. You understand what I'm saying? I think that men, uh, they all understand what I'm saying. The apostle of Jesus could never have this. If you are chased in your dreams by like snakes, by the police, anybody say you are you are flying for some somebody, something, some animals that is chasing you in your dreams. It is because of sin. Those are signs that God is letting is showing you. To make you understand that you are not on the right path. And the more powerful one is when a spirit can sit on you and even choke you during the night. You want to move, but you are unable to move, even to move, and you're not even able to scream. Me, myself, it has happened to me so many times. I had nightmares. I wanted to scream, to speak to all the people that were in front of me, but the voice couldn't couldn't go out. It is a demon from hell that is doing this. And by the time that you are alive, you must seek deliverance from this. And, and the Bible says, that you, it is not by fasting or praying that you will be delivered. When you go to church and you say to the pastor, Hey, 
I had a nightmare. Uh, the spirit choked me. Oh my God, so do you know? Hey, I'm a puffer man. Be oh my God, I'm in the zeal. The pastor, he experienced it too. Now I don't put his wife on a way to the zeal, but Jenga. But he must say something to you. What do I do? So cool, my boy. Because he has a business to protect. Oh, but all the business, I'm really a little clean. It is his job. No, we said his wife on a roll. So he said. Oh, the spirit is saying to me, you must do a one month fast. At the same night, the spirit come, will come and he will choke him too. The Bible does not speak about fasting or prayer to be delivered. But the Bible says you will learn the truth and the truth shall set you free. It is the way that God is providing us in, if you want to be saved. You, you heard many names in this preaching, in the sermon of Prophet Kakufili. You heard the, the, the term, the age of Laodicea. It is a revelation of prophet. It, actually, it's a revelation of the prophet that came before Prophet Kakufilip, which is called William Marion Branham. Laodicea is the name of a church of the time of Paul. And in the book of Revelations, there are, the, it is uh, spoke of seven messages sent to seven churches. Church of Ephesia, uh, uh, Philadelphia, Laodicea. And all the seven messages, they are different. Which, which one of the seven messages is concerning you? If it is not a real prophet that is revealing it to you, then you will never know. And us, we know that all the seven messages, it is seven messages addressed to, seven, to the church at a certain step. And today we are on the last step, the seventh step, which is the age of Laodicea. Those seven ages of the church are seventh age for the church of the nations. Because God had an alliance with Israel before. And the last one who had the keys of the heaven in Israel. It was the Apostle Peter. Because Jesus gave it gave the keys to the heaven to Peter before he went back to his position oh, God. And one day I, I will stop the sermon on this. And one day a man of the nation, a non-Jew, a man who wasn't a Jew, <laughs> he had a vis uh, an, a an angel called him because this guy who, whose name was Cornelius he was living so good according to the word of God and the angel said the angel said to Cornelius that you must bring this guy Peter to your home then you will be saved and the Bible says that Peter came 
Upetro weza. Peter had the keys of the heaven at that time. Upi Upetro wena wena makiasi zulinga nisoska. Peter spoke to Cornelius. Upetro akuluma ku Cornelius. And the Holy Spirit was attracted by the words of Peter. So can Cornelius can receive the Holy Spirit. Before this, Cornelius was praying. He was, he was fasting. He was going to church. He was reading the scriptures. But before Paul spoke to him, he could never have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit come, comes down on the word of the person who has the keys of the heaven in one generation. Amen. 